Mark Etchinson, welcome. Thank you, Claire. So you just participated in the session, the e uh, is the EU dead? Long live the EU. Mm. Um, now, obviously, a week after the Brexit, we'll have to talk about this. We're already dealing with, with a multi-track Europe. Now, what impacts will this Brexit have? Right. So look, I think, you know, as a, as a business, you have to deal with complexity. So if you, nobody really picked Brexit was going to happen. Nobody picked Arab Spring was going to happen. Nobody picked, you know, oil was going to be $40. So you can't see those things coming at you. So you've really got to make sure you're flexible enough to pivot, to make sure that you, you understand the nuances, but get on with business, basically. So, you know, Brexit happened a week ago, and I get asked all the time, what difference does it make to your business? Well, none, right? I mean, I, mean, I tell my staff is just don't read the newspapers, get back to work. And that's the best thing they can do. I mean, we'll let the politicians and the government kind of sort out the macro stuff, but we have to get on with business, and uh, that's what we do. So, the, you know, th as we think about kind of this globally, though, it just makes it more important to make sure you're, you're local everywhere. What does global mean? It means you're local everywhere. As much as you can, you create growth, you create markets wherever you are, and if things change, you pivot. And so that's what we're doing. So, look, you know, it's, it's how Brexit plays out. I don't know, but I can tell you we're just going to go on with business and it makes no difference to what we're doing immediately to the UK. Maybe in time it does, maybe it doesn't. So you're not at all worried about the, the consequences of this Brexit on G Europe-wide? No, not at all, no. I mean, because I think, you know, we get on with business anyway. So, so at the moment it's too early to tell, right? Uh, we have 22,000 people in the UK, um, great employees, great capability. We export a lot. That's not going to change. So in time, we'll tell. And uh, you know, I, I'm not smart enough to figure out uh, where that's going to be. At the moment, we just have to get on with what we do. So. so what do you think about, when we talk about the EU in general, what are the main challenges it's facing right now? Yeah, I think I'd say, I'd answer by saying, look, you know, the challenges are, are well documented now. And, but you know, I think we look at it and think, well, there's more opportunity than, than, than problems. And so we, we look at it very positively. The, the euro is very competitive at the moment. It, it makes Europe competitive. So in all the problems that Europe has, uh, it's, it's a competitive place to do business and to export from particularly. And things like digital we think are going to be huge here. So that's just going to change the, the dynamics anyway. So we, li we, work at, you know, we live in a global economy. We have to deal with that. Uh, so as we look along you know, the problems of Europe, we look at where the opportunities are. And then Europe, as Europe evolves, we think the, the unity of Europe for certain things is really important. You know, uh, mobility of people. Um, we look at uh, trade, right? But then for other things, it's not. So trying to regulate everything just kills initiative. So our view is, you know, regulate for those things which Europe needs and don't for where they, they don't make a difference and let the countries compete. So when we think about investment, we want to go to where the best competition is. So let the countries compete. So look, you know, I, I look at this very positively. Um, Europe's a great place to be. We love Europe. We, we have 100,000 people in Europe. So we're really European in the company, actually. So you're European friendly, that's for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we've invested you know, 17 billion in Europe over the last 10 years, 100,000 employees. We're European, right? So we, we're American too, but we're also European as well. But 50 years down the line, I mean, we look at superpowers such as the United States mm. and China will be at the big table. Do you think Europe will be as well? I, I would say Europe has to be. A and as a European, I, I hope that's the case, right? Because you need that balance in between the big powers, the United States and China. I, I actually, uh, I lived in China for five years. I love China as a, as a place and I love you know, the way that they're kind of looking at how to grow into a bigger power, right? Europe needs to be that balance. So I, I think, again, I come back to what does Europe need to, you know, to do to make sure it has that seat at the table and not just disintegrate into or fragment into lots of smaller individual countries which uh, are, are meaningless. We, we talk a lot about this fragmentation right now because of the Brexit. Yeah. Are you worried that this could actually happen or do you think maybe Europe needs a makeover, uh, change its ambitions or review yeah. its ambitions? I think it certainly needs a makeover. And I think the, the project of trying to standardize everything we possibly can I is we have to rethink. Because uh, actually I think that kills competition and it makes, it makes it too difficult to do business here some, some places. So I think you know, rethinking about what's important in Europe, 
those things that really matter, because every country is different. That's the, that's the beauty about Europe. Every country we operate is different. And so to try and standardize everything, in my mind, doesn't make sense. So pick those things which are really important, trade, migration of jobs, okay? And then just let the others, you know, sort themselves out in, in the countries. So you do think that uh, there are some particular powers that Europe, in its entity, with all these different countries, have that the United States or China, for example, just to name a few, yeah. don't have? Well, I think the, uh, we, we look at Europe, I mean, I mean from a, we, we're a, a manufacturer, right? We love the, the capability in Europe, right? The R&D capability, the innovation capability, the engineering capability. And we think Europe's second to none. So we think there's a massive advantage there. We look at the digital world, which you know, you, you, you've kind of grown up in a different world and with the consumer internet. The next big wave is the industrial internet. It's going to be massive, massive, as machines kind of learn how to kind of self-correct, how machines talk together. This is going to hu hugely improve productivity around the globe. And our view is it's, uh, because of Europe's competitiveness and because of Europe's capability, engineers, machines, uh, the ecosystem around that, that actually Europe can be a leader and not a follower. In the consumer internet, Europe's a follower. Okay. In the industrial internet, we think Europe can lead. Well, thank you very much, Mark Hutchinson, for this interview. Pleasure. Thank you.